Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Linda from the Vascular Birthmarks Foundation from sunny California. Today with world-renowned laser expert, Dr. Stuart Nelson of the Beckman Laser Institute. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. And today we're very excited. We're going to wait for some of you to log in so our good news won't be heard by just us because <laughs> we already know the news. So we're hoping to see quite a few of you logged in and we'll wait. Um, okay, let's see. It, I got to, oh, April just joined. So I'm going to make sure I have to remember that uh, the scrolling, how do we do the scrolling here when the people log in so I can scroll? Do you remember how to do that Obviously. scroll? There was a thing we on the side. We have Eliha. That's all right. I, can, I might have to do it on my phone because I'm not seeing it, that to do it. Uh, let me just see. I'll pull it up here. Technical difficulty. <laughs> We're not seeing. This is this is why we need Richard to test. But is it over here? It used to like, be, oh, I thought over there where you would scroll just, it. Yeah, I'm not seeing. So what happens that. if you just go down? Uh, let's see. I'm looking for us on here, and I might have to keep it live on my phone. I can see where we're talking, but. I'm not seeing the actual live session. Here it is. Okay. Comments. I'm looking for Oops, us sorry. I'm going to have to turn I off my to... sound. So you're not, okay, April's joined. There you go. Okay, well, we have people joining, but, you know, the problem is when I have to scroll up and down for the questions. So, hi, everybody. Hang in there. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Kristen. I'm um, just hoping this will all scroll through for us. We see that we have, it's saying there's 15, 16 people on, but we're not seeing any questions, and that's uh, concerning. Can somebody put some comments in the uh, comment boxes so we can see? Okay, thank you, Mary. Mary said hi just because I want to be able to see. And again, like, I'm not quite sure where our, our bar is for dragging, but I may have to try to do it on here. There you go. Um, oh, there it popped up. Good. Okay, Romania, your daughter is 10 and last year had two procedures due to the clotting and swelling of a venous. For the second, they used bleo for the first time and even through puberty, she's doing well. Is it possible the VM went dormant? Well, that venous malformations can be highly sensitive to hormonal changes. I'm not as familiar with bleomycin as a sclerosis as I am some of the other alcohols and agents that we use here in Southern California. But venous malformations can be dormant, and then if there's a traumatic injury or if there's a change in the hormonal status of the patient, uh, they can begin to start growing again. So that's a good question, and they can Very be good dormant. Question. Hi, Vin. Um, she's saying good evening. Thanks so much. As a child, I received laser that destroyed hair follicles on my left cheek. As an adult, I can, I can grow a full beard except everywhere except my left cheek area. I'm considering a hair transplant. Any advice or reasoning as to why I shouldn't? Is there a chance it won't accept the new follicles? Wonderful question. Uh, you can certainly have the hair transplant in that area. That's not going to be a problem. The problem you had is unfortunately yellow light is absorbed by melanin in the hair follicles. And so unfortunately it's not unusual for people to get alopecia in areas on the face that have been treated by pulse dye laser because of that absorption by melanin in the hair follicles. And um, I've heard some doctors say the hair will come back. So he's an example. Well, of there's where a, it's it the numbers that we generally quote, or the chances of alopecia are about 20%. So before I do a rounded eyebrow or I go into the scalp, I have a discussion with the parents and I let them make the decision about whether or not they want to have that area treated. So 20, about 20%, 20 it won't 20%. come back. Yes. That's really important yes. to know. Um, Luke has a newborn six weeks with Sturge Weber and looking to get some info regarding the bilateral port wine. We, we have Ann Comey they can get in touch with. Mm -hmm. or well, so I think he's asking about the laser treatment. Okay. So certainly um, for bilateral facial port wine stain in association with Sturge Weber, I would tell you it's essential to start that treatment as soon as possible. Uh, particularly if those lesions are involving the cheeks and the upper lips in addition to the forehead because those areas can be resistant. So Luke, I would encourage you to have your child evaluated for laser treatment as soon as possible. 
At this point, it can be done as an office-based procedure without having to do uh, it under anesthesia. Um, Justin just blew our story. <laughs> so He's Justin, asking about uh, the, the Prima. Prima. And so Justin, Yay. just today, the Woo! Prima laser, the first one in Southern California, was delivered to the Beckman Laser Institute, and it's going to be installed on Wednesday, and then I have to have my biomedical engineering people sign off on it, and then I need to have my staff trained by the Candela nurse. So I'm cautiously optimistic within the next two weeks that we'll be doing treatments. And he's asking about, you know, how much better it is, but you won't really know. I mean, there's some We don't really know, but yes. there's certainly, my background is in engineering. Uh, there's some optical advantages because of the larger spot size. The light will go deeper into the skin. Also, the laser has a higher energy associated with it. So I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to see better results with this device. I'm excited. Um, so Kate wants to know what a good age is to start general anesthesia with an infant. So, you know, it's, we have a lot of... It depends on where the port wine stain is located. If it's not around the orbit, you can, you can wait for a longer period of time. If it is around the orbit, you just have to make sure you can get a contact lens into the eye to protect the eye. So it's, I let the family make the decision. I mean, we try and not use general anesthesia uh, for as long as we can. And then if it gets to the point where we just can't do the treatment properly, then I'll recommend that we convert to, over to anesthesia. And how many treatments would you do a year if you do have to use the general? Do you limit it? Or? No, I mean, no, we will do them typically every six weeks or so. Okay. Um, Vanessa wants to know, Lorena has had 10 treatments. She's one of Dr. G's patients, I believe, for the first time. Oh, she scabbed and it okay. looks a little infected. Our derm in Toronto suggested just using polysporin and it should be better within a week. Any other suggestions? Why did this happen? Well, I like, to, for the antibiotic ointment, I would encourage you to use mupirocin or Bactroban as the generic. It also has some epidermal growth factors in it in addition to being an antibiotic. Also, a lot of the sporins, a lot of children can be allergic to that, so I don't like to use neo or polysporin. So I would recommend that you talk to your pediatrician about 2% mupirocin ointment or Bactroban. And by the way, Vin, if you do get that hair transplant, stay in touch with us. I'd really like you to share with us how that comes out and how it's doing for your port wine. I'm, I don't know anyone else that's had it done, so I'm really excited if you do get it done to stay in touch with me or, and maybe Dr. Nelson, because I'd be interested yeah. to see. It can certainly it be done. Um, so, uh, so, so back to Luke Howard, he has yeah, glaucoma. glaucoma. You know, we do, we have patients who are going back and forth, unfortunately, with Sturge Weber syndrome who've got serious glaucoma issues. You know, almost every other month they're seeing me or the ophthalmologist having surgery. So no, it doesn't have an impact on his laser treatment. The only thing you need to know is you need to advise us if we're doing the laser treatment and we're putting the eye shields in, depending on the type of glaucoma surgery that's done and the valve that's put into the ointment, sometimes the ophthalmologists don't want us putting the corneal shields in until the, the, uh, the valve is stable and it's had an opportunity to heal. So just make sure that we can communicate with your ophthalmologist about uh, the timing of doing the ocular shields. And this week, um, Dr. Linda's uh, fact of the week was about if you're lasering around the orbit for either an infantile hemangioma or port wine to use the corneal shield. So that's your, your unless I guess now there's this exception I didn't know about, which may be if there's a glaucoma complication. Well, it's just that the type of surgery, if you don't want to be putting the, the trauma of putting the shield into the right, orbit right. until that valve has had the opportunity to heal properly. So we let most of the time the ophthalmologists are fine with it, but I always ask, you know, is it okay for us to do that? But the gold standard is to use the always use an eye shield. shield. Okay. Ob obviously eye shield. So Trisha's new. She wants to know what the Prima is. Maybe you could just give a little bit of the a description. Well, the Prima is the new version of the B beam. The B beam came out in the early 2000s, and it's been the standard of care for probably about the last, you know, 12 to 15 years. But there's been no improvements in it. So with the Prima now, we've got more energy, so we can deliver higher light dosages. The spot size is much larger, so as I said, the light will go deeper into the skin using this device. It will cut down on the treatment time, particularly if when we're gonna be doing procedures under anesthesia where we have large extremity lesions or truncal lesions. 
Uh, so it's going to help in a number of different aspects. So too, um, maybe those patients that have been seeing you or other doctors where they weren't getting any additional clearance, yeah, they, they come, should back and come back and have a look. Try the Prima. So I am very excited. If any families are getting it, I'd like to you to you know let us know so we can yeah. share their results. Deborah says, do you feel that the Alexandrite is a good option for treating or preventing lip hypertrophy? Can any other laser be useful for lip hypertrophy? Well, the lip hypertrophy occurs as a result of the fact that there's increased blood flow in those areas. And because of that increase in blood flow, uh, that's why you get the soft tissue hypertrophy of the lips. So if you can treat infants and young children, I think that you can prevent to a certain extent the development of that lip hypertrophy. But once it's already happened, then you need to talk to some of our surgical colleagues through the VBF about having a reduction surgery. Yeah, unfortunate. People do think that if they get the sting completely lasered away, the lip will never enlarge, but that's no, not no. true. Um, Vanessa just wanted to know if you could spell that cream you recommended that she get. You, well, it's true. called Bactroban, B-A-C-T-R-O-B-A-N. Okay, thank you. And the you. generic is Mupirocin, 2% Mupirocin ointment. Apply it twice a day. Okay, so that's good to the back to Uh Fatima says, hello, I had pulse dye laser at the age of 18. I'm now 29 and had a child two years ago. I've started to notice some areas are coming back. When do you think I should go back? How is the result going to be after these return laser therapy? Well, that's related to this, the question that we had earlier about changes in our hormonal status. It's certainly well known that when women get pregnant, their vascular birthmarks and vascular malformations get worse. So certainly you can go back for laser therapy and we should be able to get you back to the baseline uh, that you were at before you uh, became pregnant. Um, Romney, Romina wants to know, will it ha the laser help the discoloration in a superficial venous malformation? It depends on how deep in the skin. If the, val if the malformation is within a couple of millimeters of the surface of the skin, then you can often use the ND YAG laser, which is another feature of the Prima. In addition to the pulse dye laser, it also has an ND YAG laser. So some of those superficial venous malformations can be treated by laser. So the Prima has two laser lights in it? Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, it has, it has not two laser lights, two with different wavelengths. Two wavelengths. So one for the the so superficial lens for the V beam, and the other and for the, the other YAG. for the YAG. Okay. Um, the other thing is we're working with Venthera, and they're coming out with a topical. So stay in touch with us, Ramina, that there's a topical coming out in the next year mm -hmm. for the superficial venous malformations. Uh, Luke says they're in Australia, more than willing to travel to get the best treatment. How regular? You should come to Greece. <laughs> We're doing free laser in Greece on June uh, 7th and 8th. It's on our website at birthmark.org backslash conferences. And you can see all of them, like the conference we have coming up in Miami. There's going to be free laser with Dr. Uh, Duarte in Greece with Dr. Nelson and Dr. Geronimus. And, and then, also you can come to the VBF conference here in Irvine right. in October. I mean, that's definitely a direct flight from uh, Australia. Right. In Australia, I can highly recommend Dr. Philip Becker, who's in Melbourne or Melbourne. I hope I haven't just butchered that uh, pronunciation. But Phil is very highly experienced in the clinical management of infants and young children with vascular malformations. And, and uh, Dr. Geronimus gave me the name of a doctor in Australia too, a derm that's doing early laser. So if you know. email me at um, Dr. Linda or vbfpresident at gmail.com, I can also give you the name of that doctor from Australia and you can at least email him and find out. Just wants to know what is the eye shield? His daughter is going to Dr. G for a consult but I'm not sure what to expect. He, he's like the king of the eye shield. Well, the eye shield is, a, 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 think of a contact lens, mm -hmm. only it's made of highly reflective metal so that the orbit is completely covered. And that's the key yeah. thing. We have many patients who come to Beckman from other states because they don't have a whole profile of different sizes of eye shields. You know, because we do a lot of infants and young children, we have a lot of small eye shields. Because we do a lot of adults, we have large eye shields. I mean, you just have to make sure that the entire orbit is completely covered because the light can be absorbed by the retina. It can also be destroyed, uh, absorbed by melanin in the iris, which can be cause glaucoma. So you just need to make sure that they have the right size. And if you're seeing Roy in New York, 
you're in excellent hands. Right, and um, I've seen it done. He pulls the lid down, he pops it in, just like you're popping in. He lasers, and then he pops it right out. Um, I've watched that done, and I might even be asking him if I can get a video of that being done so we could put it on our website. I have, if you come to the conference in Irvine, I actually have a series of pictures that show us putting in the contact. Okay, lenses. that's great. Maybe we could get, get those from you. Um, I saw someone that, oh, here, Jessica. She sees Dr. Garden. He's also great. I know Jerry Chicago. Garden very well. He's You're excited. an excellent hand. He's excited. Are, I'm excited to see if he will be getting the Prima soon. Not primary, it's called the Prima, P-R-I-M-A. I'll see Jerry um, in, in Denver later this week, so I'll ask him when he's getting his device. Yeah, but he's one of the top docs in the country for doing these lasers, so good hands. Susan says her son is two and a half, and it's on his cheek, neck, and ear. Had his first treatment under general anesthesia at the end of January. He's had 16 so far. Do you suggest Prima on his stubborn port wine? Absolutely. And that's the purpose of the device. Higher energies, deeper penetration of the light into the skin. As I said, we're cautiously optimistic that we're going to see better responses in patients who've had these resistant type of port wine stains. And also maybe f fewer treatments. Yeah. Well, right? faster treatments too. Faster, less fewer, anesthesia. Right? So there's a, we're really excited to finally get it. Any... Um, any any feedback on is it more painful for the non-general anesthesia? Is the no, same? it shouldn't. It should be the same. And it's it the dynamic same. cooling yeah, is used the DCD with it. Has so, it's all okay. in there. Hi, Kimberly. Um, she's one of my hemangioma mamas. Thank you, Jackie Mazzani, for spelling Bacterban for the group. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, welcome to everybody else who's joined. Uh, Mendy Joe is KHE a type of vascular birthmark. We include Kaposi form yeah. of hemangioma endothelioma in our group, especially because many of these patients are just diagnosed with an infantile hemangioma, yeah. so they get to our group to get accurately diagnosed. But does the laser have a role in no, this? No, the laser so. does not have a role. The treatment is medical. In fact, you and I, a couple of weeks ago, corresponded on a Saturday night where I actually contacted a woman in Texas who had contacted you. And I mean, these can be very aggressive tumors and they need to be promptly treated. And that was one of VBF's finest hours. By Monday morning, we had her in the hands of Moises Levy in Austin, Texas, yeah. getting treatment. So yeah, that's great. they need to. The laser is not going to be helpful for a for a KHE medical yeah. therapy. Yep. And um, okay, everybody's saying thank you, Casey Hall. Would you ever do a conference in the Seattle area? Absolutely. Uh, I'm from Vancouver. I love the Pacific Northwest. Our West Coast. Con well, then we have to give it up in Irvine. She well, just not well, we talk about go. you. We She's like the VBF. The University of Washington offered me a job about 20 years ago to order. We were going to or, organize the Pacific Northwest Laser Institute. Okay. But my wife wouldn't go to Seattle, but I love it. So I think you missed the point. The VBF conference is in Irvine, and then it's in New York on the even years. So. But you can fly down from Seattle to Orange County in about two and a half hours. Right. You don't have to go to L.A. We'd be happy to see you in October. Okay, Shannon says she's 47 and she's had 16 PDLs from age 12 to 22. Okay, I'm not I, sure what your yeah, question is. Yeah, I don't know is. what the question is. She'll pop it back. Mendy said her son has had KHE since he was four. He's almost 13 and I'm still, still on, on rapid immune. Yeah, that's... I know, you know, email me, Mendy, but I think we might have been talking. If not, I'd like to put you in touch with one of my doctors that's in New York City because they have a new combo drug for that now where they're actually using the serolimus. Well, that's what Rapimune is. But I mean, it's a it's a new combo. It's a new cocktail combination that they're using that, for the that KG. I don't know. And I know Dr. Bly is treating a number of cases with the group from Boston Children's on this new uh, protocol. Um, hi, Lita and Vanessa said a friend of hers suggested she look into the laser called XLV by Cutera. Not that's sure. that's a that's a uh, laser that we had and tested. Uh, it's green light as opposed to yellow light, so it doesn't go as deep in the skin as the pulse dye laser. And I did not find it to be as good a treatment for vascular or port wine stains as the pulse dye laser. And so we chose not to buy that at yeah. our institute, and we bought the newer edition of the pulse dye laser, namely the V-Beam Prima. Yeah, and Vanessa's with Dr. G, and yeah. between you and Dr. G, there's nothing out there on the market that they don't know about that they can recommend, because they're the two top laser doctors that all the companies use. KTP so, stands for potassium titanophosphate. It's the crystal inside the laser that's producing the green light. 
Um, Serena said, I wanted to say thank you, Dr. Nelson treated my port wine, such a great doctor. I was so pleased. I've had two children since Serena Gordon. Okay, um, looking forward to seeing and your children. I'll be back again with the Prima <laughs> to try the Prima. Corinne said, hi. Uh, yeah, she would like a conference in Seattle. It's not gonna happen, <laughs> sorry. Don't get people's hopes up. We got all we can do to do one national and one international. Uh, Susan Klingbeil, are you the only one with the Prima? Yeah. Well, here in Southern California. Right. But, but I mean, there are there are apparently two or three in Northern California. I know there's one in Denver. Um, I mean, the company told me that they've got orders for 65, which they're trying to get out as soon as possible. So I, they they're said they're going to have their, their factory sort of in May is going to be at maximum output. So I think within the next six to 12 months, we're going to see them uh, scattered over the US. Um, and Julie's question, um, I have an email into a Candela Center on my liaison on there um, asking her who has them, not just in um, the USA, but in the UK and some other places because parents are asking me every single day who has these. Um, hi, Scott, great to see you on here. And he's been actually having the Prima for over a year now and his cobbling is amazing. I think he looks phenomenal. Well, that's probably due to the ND YAG portion of the Prima, which right. Roy's using. So right. that's the advantage of the Prima, that second wavelength. Right, um, Myrene says her dermatologist has the new laser PIQ04 by Luminins. Um, his PA told me this would also be suitable to treat, which had been treated in the 80s. I'm 62. I don't know. I think the PIQ04, I'm not sure it's actually a laser. It may be an intense pulse light device. If it is, yeah. those devices are not as helpful as lasers. Oh, okay. So Vanessa gets treatment in Toronto as well. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, okay. Taking a break. Okay. Um, okay. So taking a break, like that's a good question that Vanessa brings up too, like during the summer. Yeah, you're in we the have sun. a lot of families that, that we see their children from, you know, October to May. And then okay. we're off in the summer, particularly children oh. with darker skin types, because if they get tanned, the melanin in the upper layer of the skin will yeah. block the laser light from going down to the port yeah. wine stain. So we very often take breaks during the summer. Yeah, so that, that just answers your question, Vanessa. I can't believe she's going to be one already. Um, so Tricia's from San Antonio. My five-year-old has a witch doctor. Would you recommend? Um, we have. Well, in San Antonio, I don't know anybody well, off the top of my head, well, but in, in Houston, there's Paul Friedman, who's a former right. fellow of Roy Geronimus's. Right, that's what I was going to say. And then also in Austin yep. would be Dr. Moises Levy. Mm -hmm. So there's two excellent people in mm -hmm. uh, Southwest Texas. Right. So, Mendy, just email me uh, through vbfpresident at gmail.com, and I'll give you her email. Uh, Carrie says, is there a list? Oh, she already asked that. Um, I put in a request for the list so I would be able to post it on our website. Um, hi from Romania. Uh, hello. Um, oh, so Lita wants to know about the Prima. It's the, we've been talking about it, Lita, and if you go back, um, and re-listen, you'll hear Dr. Geron uh, Dr. Nelson describe this laser, which is a combination of the pulse dye and the NDAG that's used jointly together to get deeper, bigger, and more aggressive clearance, I guess. Yeah. Less um, anesthesia less exposure. Less anesthesia. Um, Fatima is from Pakistan. She heard about our group back in 08 and found so much hope. Thank you. You're welcome. And Suzanne said, sorry, uh, is it pretty much better? Yes, we talk about this so you can go back and listen um, what he says uh, about this because um, she's saying she has it on her arm. She sees Dr. G and took a break. He has the Prima. Well, so. he does. He has a prototype. In oh, fact, I texted oh, him right. today to ask him if he's got his Prima, and he said he's expecting it in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Well, you just answered it. Um, when is the Toronto event? The Toronto, that's ISFA, is I believe April of next year. Well, it's not in Toronto. ISFA is in Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver. The reason I know that is because Vancouver is my hometown. Okay. So it's mid-May, and it's at the Bayshore Inn Hotel in Vancouver, okay. which is a fantastic location. Okay. Well, there you go. You knew you knew more, more than I do, and I've already signed up for it, but I didn't, I didn't really pay attention. 
Um, okay, Casey said, this is a long one. <laughs> Gonna see about coming to the conference in October. Yay, Casey, it's right here at the Beckman Laser Institute. You haven't seen anyone about it since you were 12. Um, you've had 12, you wanted to see what would happen during period, you're 23. Um, okay, so. Absolutely, yes. the conference will help you with yes. what's going on with your lip. Yes, we have surgeons, we have yeah. experts, and every vascular birthmark type here. It's when the, you the like best sign up for the conference, request a consultation with Dr. Milton Weiner that Linda can hook you up with to talk yep. to you about the surgical options for your yep. lip hypertrophy. Yep. Um, I came to London to treat my sons. Can you tell me a good doctor? Uh, Elder Hay, Elder Hay, is that the name I of it? I don't know. The I have, um, you can email me. I have the name of a woman in London that's treating early, and then there is the gosh, the Grand Ormond Street Hospital. I can also um, highly recommend in Birmingham, if you're willing to travel, Dr. Sean Lanigan, who's a contemporary physician of mine who's also highly experienced in laser treatments of vascular birthmarks. So, Sean Lanigan, okay. birth, well, Birmingham. Yeah. We have somebody on our website at birthmark.org, ask the doctor, or um, find a doctor in Atlanta. I just can't remember what his name is right now. It might be Williams or Smith. You can um, take a look. Um, you came, I can come to the, well, unfortunately, Vancouver, there you go. It, but it's not open to the public. It's the ISFA meeting. Oh. There's no patient session. It's only for physicians. So, and um, unless I coordinate some kind of a patient um, session, but well, we as, could of do now, that. as of now, we'd have to get permission from the president. That's Dr. Well, we could maybe Galone do an ad on day at the end of the conference, yeah. a patient advocacy day or something. Yeah. Where we have the doctors uh, available to do consultations for free. So I Still, think we could do that. I'd have to. I. I'd have to discuss that and find out about, I mean, it's a great idea, but we have to do things right. If, if we just have to get permission meeting, from the ISPA. Yeah, we'd need permission. You can contact Iona Frieden. Thanks. My husband struggles with doing treatments with our four-year-old son. He says, what's the point? There's no guarantee it'll stop hypertrophy. Well, it depends on how deep the port wine stain is, but I mean, certainly it's going to help the color of the port wine stain. It's going to prevent the nodularity that can happen. But your husband is correct. We know if it's too deep in the skin or if it's completely through the skin, unfortunately, the patient may develop hypertrophy later on. So um, everybody's asking the event, National Society for the Study of Vascular Anomalies meeting, which all physicians, PhDs like myself, um, attended to find out what the latest is in treatment. They do not have clinics or free treatments or anything like that. What we just talked about was if we could possibly get a clinic set up at that, which I would have to coordinate, um, but we don't know about that yet. We, I don't know if the Prima is in Canada. Again, I'm gonna ask Candela for the list, my contact, and we can post it on our website at birthmark.org as soon as we get it. Although it'll be like a moving target because every day it'll be updated yep. because they're being delivered every day to somebody else. Dr. Drolet is amazing. She's coming to our conference in October right here yep. in California to discuss her new um, research on overgrowth syndrome. I do not know if she has the Prima. We don't know who has it. We only know that Dr. Geronimo, I mean, Dr. Nelson just got it. Um, so that's all we know. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Sharon, Shannon, um, again, ISPA's been around for like 25 years and it's a completely doctor run organization where we're the only organization that brings the doctors and the patients together. That's all vascular birthmark types. So I would love to say I would like to do this and maybe we could do something and call it a VBF event and have to have a different hospital sponsor us but I don't know yet because it's it's somebody else's event, it's not ours. So we can maybe um, ask them if we could just, on the afternoon after the conference ends. Yeah. You know, if a sep just DBF you, you, will do this. Yeah, we'll coordinate it, it would be me. <laughs> they can only uh, say no. Right, this is true, okay. Um, okay, so do you know if Dr. Drolet, okay, right, in Wisconsin. Um, and you can call, you know, you can call the, your doctor's offices and ask them, did you get the Prima laser? So um, there's nothing wrong with you calling and asking that. Sure. And Dr. Jolet's office is phenomenal. 
Um, so yeah, you can you can ask her. Uh, and again, she she may be on the waiting list because I mean, Dr. Nelson invented the dynamic cooling device, and you've been begging for this for how long? You've been well, waiting. we put the order in in June of last year. Yeah, we're promised Nine delivery months. in August, and today it arrived. But but to be honest and fair, there were some bugs that had to be worked out, and we want a bug free yeah. device, and now we That's have true. a bug free device. So this is a good thing. Hi, Julia. Say hi to Jackson for me. Oh, yeah. Hi, Julia. Yes, he's our little guy. Um, okay, we see Dr. Williams. Oh, that's him. It's Dr. Williams. I love him. I keep, yeah, that's what I thought. His name was Williams. Didn't I say that? Yeah. What's Williams? his first name and where is he? At? Uh, he's in Atlanta and and uh, I can't remember. Don't, don't, I'm not good with remembering first names, but I remembered it was Dr. Williams, so kudos to me. Um, our current doctor will only treat our two-year-old under GA every three months. Should we be treating more often? Well, I would try and be as aggressive as I possibly can. I mean, what was the age of the child again? You're going up and he, down. Oh, it's right He's here. two years old. He's two. I mean, even with a two, I mean, it just depends on the location. You might even be able to do a two-year-old, you know, with just an office-based. I did a child that was five and a half today. Parents were very helpful, cooperative. Uh, the child was able to do it. But I would do it more frequently. I would probably try and do it every three or four weeks. So Deanna, boy, are you timing? Is your timing right about the uh, psychosocial studies on effects of children without it? We have that paper right on our website at birthmark.org that just came out by Dr. Roy Geronimus, which was a, a long-term retrospective study to see if there were any psychosocial effects on his patients that were treated. And it was a very good paper that said there were not, um, but you can find that paper on our website. Maybe uh, one of my um, staff that are on here can give you the link, can post it below here. Or just so you Google, can see the, it. Google the paper. You can probably just Google well, it. Well, we have it right on our website. Okay. So they can, you know, just Download somebody, the PDF. somebody can just post the link because I got the PDF and, lo and gave it to be loaded. Um, I understand infants should avoid it due to developmental delays. A lot of controversy around that. One study out of Australia last year said uh, there was a, a brain barrier issue, and then this big study that came out of Canada said there wasn't. So we try to put both studies up, and then everybody has to make their own best decision of what to do for their child. And we have doctors that absolutely refuse to treat without anesthesia, and then we have our whole team of doctors that treat without it. So you have we to do both. Yeah. And you have to weigh the pros and cons based on, you know, children are different too. Some are, you can drop them on their head and they get up and go play and others are trauma, traumatized. Um, so Mary said her son is 14 and from five months to 16 months in his port Weinstein right cheek was almost gone. And uh, we took a four months break and it returned. We started treating again. And um, you, should, you should be able to get back to the baseline of the clearance that you have. But it may then, take a couple of treatments, but I would say yes. If, yeah, if it came back in four months, then she should stay on top of it, right? Like yeah. not let mm -hmm. more than that much time go between. Um, is it going to be difficult to use if there is a learning curve, worried about it, scarring? No, with the pulse dye, the new Prima, I mean, for people like myself who've been doing pulse dye laser treatments for 30 years, it's just good. It's going to be pretty much like the older device. So no, I think my staff, my staff's going to have to learn some of the cleaning of the device, some of the optics, and some of the other things. But no, I don't think there'll be any a curve. So again, we keep saying this over and over. We don't know who has the new uh, laser. We don't know. We know Dr. Nelson just got it, and he's been waiting since last year. Dr. Anderson probably has it. Right, Rox Anderson? I don't, I'll see Rox again. I'm going to see everybody at the end of this week in Denver, the ASLMS, so I don't know. Right, okay. But and call the, the Massachusetts General Hospital Laser Center. They'll tell you whether or not they have right. a brain. I mean, that's an easy And thing thanks, do. Kristen. She posted to Deanna the link to that research paper by Dr. Geronimus on the psychosocial effects. Thank you. Uh, long-term problems from argon or dipoles? Well, from the argon laser, because there was no cooling technology, there was a lot of scarring in patients who got argon laser treatment. In fact, that was one of the more motivations to develop the dynamic cooling device, was because of the unacceptable scarring associated with argon laser treatment. And nobody would use the argon laser now to do a, a laser treatment of a Port wine stain. Mm -hmm. The standard of care for infants and young children and adults really is the pulse dye laser. Right. 
Um, somebody published that their birthmark is not red, which our foundation is for the red, pink, blue, purple vascular. The brown ones do not um, fall under our umbrella. Those are congenital nevuses or... A lot of nevi come through B VBF and we refer them to colleagues to get treated by Q-switch lasers. So. But the nevus... But you need a diagnosis of what yeah. exactly pigmented lesion it is. Yeah. Some will respond better than others. Right. Um, so are there any doctors you would suggest in Seattle for laser? Well, there's Dr. Jonathan Perkins at Seattle Children's, correct? I've never, right. I've only met him once at a symposia, but... But I mean, um, you know, and he, and you can even contact a Seattle Children's if it's for a child. If it's for an adult, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. But you can contact the Seattle Children's Hospital, Dr. Jonathan Perkins, and, um, and see who, who they have there for the pulse dye laser. Um, hi, Jeremy. Say hi to Reese and Carrie. The argon laser was rough. I've heard that. Yeah, well, that's because there was no cooling technology associated with it. Yep. If you do have scarring, then we now have newer lasers called the fractional lasers. So we can help you with that scarring. So I would encourage you to seek treatment by fractional laser skin resurfacing, which we now do a lot of burn scars, a lot of hypertrophic scars, post-traumatic scars, acne scars, post-surgical scars. Okay, Elizabeth is one of our newest board members. She's a nurse. She used to work with Rox Anderson, and she has a port wine bilateral. Uh, she has some questions about numbing prior to laser. She's seen a number of numbing options, mostly topical lidocaine and nerve blocks. My question is, do you find one method works better? Personally, I feel that 8% lido makes no difference in pain control. I find 23% with 7% tetracaine works amazingly well, but I'm told it's too strong for children. With nerve blocks, I worry that the epinephrine would constrict blood vessels and reduce efficacy of the treatment. Would love well, your not, thoughts. I don't like to use epinephrine at all, particularly in kids, because they can get tachycardic from it, and they, they get rapid heartbeat, so I don't like to do it. I mean, the child I was talking about today, who was five and a half, we treated with topical 2.5% lidocaine, 2.5% prilocaine, and the child did just fine. So I would probably agree with you, whether it's 4% lidocaine or 8% lidocaine, the most important thing is that it's applied properly. I had to instruct this mother. She said, well, I'm going to put it on for half an hour. And I said, that's not long enough. It really needs to be on for a good 90 minutes, and it needs to be under occlusion, and you need to apply it as a good, thick layer. I tell parents it needs to look like icing on a cake, where you can't even see the port wine stain at all. Because if it's not applied properly, it's not going to work. If it is applied properly, I found it to be very, very effective. Okay. Um, Casey said, would it be for an adult? I got my treatments at Seattle Children's Hospital. I guess you can go to Seattle Children's. Okay. So that they had it. Um, by the way, everybody, we have a new document coming out that Dr. Geronimus at the New York Laser Skin and Surgery Center and Dr. Buddy Cohen, uh, Bernard Cohen of John Hopkins, who is, is the past president of the American Academy of Pediatric Derm and myself have worked on a card that's about five by eight that we will be publishing soon called It's Just a Vascular Birthmark for you to carry around with you and explains about purpura, hemangiomas, port wines. It has pictures that show before and after treatment. Um, and these can be used to show people at airports, at play centers, any rude people in the public. Uh, and we wanna make these available to you to download or we're gonna make a uh, card copies and hand them out at our conference. But stay tuned for that for because uh, my next Facebook Live will be next month with uh, Dr. Wayner and we'll have those available then. The Pimangioma, which hasn't responded to the PDL, it keeps coming back. I'm not sure how old she is. She could be in proliferative phase. A recommendation was made for Alexandrite. Any referral for this in Florida? Maybe well, she Anna Duarte in Dr. Miami. Dr. Duarte, yeah, PD Derm Doc at um, AOL.com, so P-E-D-I-D-E-R-M-D-O-C at um, AOL.com, and she's one of our experts. You can email her through our website. And the other question, Eileen, is your daughter, uh, all, is your granddaughter receiving any other therapy besides the laser? Is she receiving topical timolol or well, oral propranolol? And you don't know how old the child we is. We don't know. So, so. We, it's hard to answer. Um, you, yeah, we did cover a lot about this um, question. She wants to know if it'll stop or slow them. 
from growing. Yeah, it, I mean the laser will keep the, the, the port wine stains from developing nodularity it's, and we all have that cobblestone type of appearance. Some of the areas it will not be helpful for the uh, hypertrophy and for those cases we refer them to uh, our surgical colleagues. So Calico wants to know if there's any suggestions for doctors in Hawaii. I don't have any. I wish I did. I think we need a conference. Actually, there. we get a lot of patients from Hawaii. <laughs> they, come, they come to us. I mean, George Martin is an excellent dermatologist on Maui, who I know very, very well. Does he laser? He does a little bit of cosmetic laser, but most of the port wine stains are coming here to uh, us here in Southern California. So they're definitely not going to have the Prima for port no. wine because they haven't been using them. Well, maybe we need to have a training session in yeah. Hawaii. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. Okay. Somebody so, asked, we went off your screen, DC area. I can highly recommend Dr. Elizabeth Tanzi. Uh, she's highly experienced in the treatment of port wine stains. I'm not sure if we have her on our website, but and we I don't should. know whether she has a Prima either. Yeah, we don't know. Again, we don't know who has the Prima. We're going to get a list from Candel over the next week or so, but that list will be outdated very quickly. Um, Sabrina says her daughter has a large port wine, arm, chest, back. We're treating no GA with Dr. Geronimus. Um, what should we do after she's one? I'm afraid it will be hard to hold her and I don't want to traumatize her. Oh, that's a decision you, need, you and your husband need to make in consultation with Roy. If you're concerned about that, then after the age of one, you know, it certainly would be appropriate, you know, to have Roy do the treatments at uh, Manhattan Eye and Ear where he's doing his general anesthesia. So I let the parents decide. I mean, that's really up to you and your husband and, yeah. and how comfortable you feel with it. If you're concerned about that, then certainly uh, you can do that. And I, I have many parents, because and I observe the 40 free treatments with Roy every year for our conference. And those kids, some of them, five, six, seven, eight, they just sit there like nothing's happening. Others are freaking out. Every child reacts different as well, yeah. not just um, the, the parents. A child will say, stop, I don't want it. My son got a one centimeter size blister on his face after PDL seven weeks ago. He's one. Will it get scarred or better? Well, it, it's hard to say. I mean, without actually seeing a photograph. I mean, scarring with a pulse dye laser is is rare. It's less than two two or three percent. I mean, if there is a scar, the fractional laser technologies can be very helpful. And after a couple of fractional treatments, usually that scarring can be corrected. Um, so Eileen said her daughter's nine, and she had propranolol as an infant needed. A referral other than Dr. Duarte. Eileen, go on our website at birthmark.org and find a doctor. And there are three others that are in Florida that you can check out any of those. And the other um, issue, Eileen, just the fact you're now saying your, your granddaughter is nine and, and the lesion is coming back. That's unusual for him. It's not a hemangio. Yeah, I it's think not. your your child, your granddaughter needs to have an MRI, MRA of her face. Right. I mean, is yeah. this a venous malformation the, well, or some other vascular the, malformation? The other thing, and I think we may have corresponded, Eileen, but we have that free conference coming up on May 4th and 5th in Miami. And we have an international doctor specialist that'll be there and I'll be there. Um, you can come and get a free opinion. That's up to you. It's for free. Um, it's on our website at birthmark.org backslash conferences. You can see Miami or you can find other doctors in Florida on our website. Um, okay. Yes, we know Hawaii needs training. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to bring the team. Especially uh, now. Yeah, yeah, I know. Kathy Sprankos is like, I'm there. I'm there, Dr. Linda. I'll be there for you. Um, my birthmarks, even with laser and the 2000 shrink in size and they're smooth. Yeah, that's what that's the laser is going to do. It's yep. going to definitely reduce the surface area yep. and it's going to flatten the lesion out and prevent the development of nodularity. Um, someone asked for recommendations in Toronto. I think back up, maybe there were some parents that had some names in Toronto. I don't have any. I would like to add them to our website. Um, you're welcome, Kim. And uh, Julie says, should all port wines have a cream put on before laser. Well, I'm not sure what type of cream you're referring to, whether you're referring to an anesthetic or whether something else. Probably like the Emla cream that you talked you know, about lathering it up. And I, mean, I like, I mean, I use the Emla cream, but I actually, if it's an adult, I prefer actually to use a local anesthetic because it's easier to do the block and it's more reliable. The patient doesn't have to be in my office for 90 minutes. They can come in have the block placed, do the procedure after five minutes, and they can be back to work what, or whatever they need to do. What are you using for the Just one percent lidocaine. Okay. And you had the question earlier about epinephrine. I do not use epinephrine because of the you can get the tachycardia and patients will tell you that they're 
having palpitations. So I don't use lidocaine. Yeah, because it's, like, it's a stimulant. Yeah, stimulant. Absolutely. Um, Jessica's saying her son had 22 treatments. Looks great. How often should he get maintenance? Closer to his nose has really flared, but purple spots are on the outer cheek area. And I, uh, the maintenance treatments I tell families every six to 12 months would be reasonable, Jessica. Or if they're popping out sooner, go earlier. Yeah. The, the cream that begins with a P? Well, uh, we've talked about several. Oh, the, the cream that I think was a topical anesthetic, that what I was talking about that I did today, it was 2.5% lidocaine, 2.5% prilocaine, P-R-I-L-O-C-A-I-N-E. Yes, we're going to be doing free lasers in Miami and uh, need to sign up because that's like only five weeks away. Um, and Vanessa's offering to chat with anyone from Toronto, which is great because she is getting treatments in both Toronto and New York with Dr. Geronimus. I don't know if she's one of our ambassadors. If not, you need to be, Vanessa, because you're like a mini expert now. Um, Alice Whiteside said her daughter has a prominent vein over the eyelid on the affected side. It's seen posts about varicose. Any chance it would treat this vein or is it a type a treatment necessary. She's 10 months old with six treatments done, three with Prima, and no change in the vein. That vein's probably too deep for anything to reach. Well, yeah, I would certainly try the YAG, but I don't know what wavelength of the Prima was used, but certainly the ND YAG would be your best option component to the Prima. The pulse dye laser probably is not going to go deep enough. All right, Julie, the propranolol that someone who was talking about, Dr. Nelson, is for only infantile hemangiomas. So that has nothing to do with port wine stains. Um, hi, uh, Nicole said, we are my daughter's mangioma on her eyebrow. Uh, she is nine months old. It's the size of a small pea. We're using Timolol. Uh, we're going every month. Wait, that's a hemangioma. Mm -hmm. Okay, not, not a port wine. Okay, we're going it. Yeah. Do you think we'll see any progress? Well, hemangiomas can be in the proliferative phase up to about 8 to 14 months. Yeah. So if your child is 9, she is still at risk for developing a proliferative stage. So I would continue with the laser and keep her on the uh, topical timolol. If it's that small, as you're describing a small pea, she does not need oral propranolol. Just wait it out. The tincture of time. Um, Iona, um, again, like your son's too, how frequent it would, there's so much you say it's on his right cheek and under his nose. It would depend on how much clearance he has. What, what, what are you trying to get? I mean, what for those, goal? those kids are probably doing them right now, probably every six weeks or so. So, um, Vanessa is one of our global ambassadors. Thank you. Um, and they're all becoming like mini experts, which is fabulous for VBF all over the world. We have 150 now, as a matter of fact. Uh, when you get maintenance every six to 12 months, better to already already these out or closer to I think she was, spread these spread out. These out. I yeah. think we typically don't do them close together. We do them like every six to 12 months. And, um, and a, a quick announcement, Dr. Nelson now has the Prima Lacer. It's, it'll be set up and he'll be ready to use it. So any of you that are uh, his patients should be excited about that. Um, and also our conference conferences. Look at them. Look at them at our website. We have a free laser and a clinic in May in Miami. Our big conference in Greece for any of you in Europe. Free laser with Dr. Nelson and free laser with Dr. Jerome. Plus a free clinic, and then of course here in October is our big annual one where we expect about 300, 350 people, families from all over the world. Children with all vascular birthmark types, um, top, top speakers. We have the free laser. We have the psychotherapy sessions. We have makeup sessions. So you can find out more about this at birthmark.org. Um, just looking at our time. So we have 11 minutes left. Um, you're welcome. Um, and a couple of you are messaging each other. So we're, we're moving fast here, but it looks like we're caught up. Um, and we already got that one. So any other questions? Um, again, Dr. Nelson does now have the Prima Laser. I'm excited to see the results. And Scott Couples, who is our Global Ambassador Director, who's on, has been receiving treatment with the Prima Laser for a year. So um, 
but that's the prototype. Yes. So I, those are two different things now because it's been modified, yes. right? Yes. Yes. So we should wait and find out some information from people using this actual version of the Prima to see the results. And, um, and well, then, I should have it very, very soon. Yeah. So then probably Scott's next treatment will be with uh, Prima. Alyssa says her daughter is seven months and has a small hemangioma about the size of a quarter under her arm. We're using Timolol. Slow progress. The size is constant, but it is less raised. How long do you think it will take to see it disappear? It could take a year or two. Or more. Or more. So, I mean, as long as it's not growing, it's not obstructing the orbit, stay with the topical Timolol and just it's the tincture of time. What about um, PDL for it? You could combine it with PDL yeah. at the same time. I that might get some Give of the redness, little, but it said that the redness oops. was actually pretty good if I read that properly. Yeah. So you're just going to have to, Alyssa, wait this out. She says just less raised, but yeah. it's still red. Yeah. Well, I would combine the pulse dye laser with that topical similar. You're welcome, Jessica. Um, Eileen says, what do you think about the Alexandrite for hemangiomas? My granddaughter had her lip debulked. And the analysis of the tissue proved it was a hemangioma. Okay, then it is a hemangioma. But it's just it's unusual at the age of nine to still have, you know, an enlargement of a hemangioma. That's why we're questioning well, the diagnosis. Well, it doesn't even well. matter. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's only as good as the person reading it, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can take the studies, and we can have four of our experts look at it, Eileen, and they may say something different. Yeah, if you and could if get a sample of the tissue slide, we could have Dr. Mim up in Boston actually look at it. Well, also our doctor from um, Italy, Dr. Coletti, is bringing his high-tech ultrasound device to Miami and Greece, and it's a little mini thing, and he can actually measure blood flow and kind of rule here in October. The question um, you need to ask those doctors, Eileen, is was it positive for a GLUT1? Because, you know, did they do the special staining to confirm that diagnosis of hemangioma? Because it's not unusual for a pathologist who's not experienced in these areas that they just see something that looks yeah, see, this is full a of blood vessels. They say it's a hemangioma. She says there's anomalies in the brain. Yeah, so there, this so. is not a, a hemangioma. This is a syndrome, unless it's face syndrome. That could be. That if it it's could a be segmental face. hemangioma yeah, yeah. of the face, it could well, be. Yeah, it could be. I thought you just said it was just the lip. No, she's saying, yeah, but it, it, she's got anomalies in the brain. That's two if pieces. It's, if it's posterior fossa, that's yeah. facey syndrome. Facey syndrome, that it could be. And that those are, you know, you need an expert to understand. I bet that's what it is, Eileen. And feel free to write me, and I can have you, I can put you in touch with talking. I mean, Dr. Nelson can review that for you. He he really understands face syndrome. We've had quite a few of those recently. Um, so Dr. Nelson's going to use the Prima as soon as it's plugged in and fired up. Well, it has to be installed, and then <laughs> and the biomat have to sign off on it, and my nurses have to be trained. So, so within the next, within two weeks, weeks, two weeks, weeks, two weeks, that okay. just takes time. Uh, she just arrived. Have you talked about anesthesia under four and what are the least desirable consequences? Yes, we did. <laughs> um, least desirable consequences, least acutely, or sometimes children can have some nausea and some vomiting. But the way we do it here with just by inhalation mask treatment is very, very well tolerated. The children are up running around 30, 40 minutes after the procedure playing with our child life specialists and the toys that we give them. So, so and Irina, it's very easy to and do. And Irina, there's still, you know, like Dr. Geronimus still treats under uh, any age without anesthesia. And so does Dr. Cohen in um, our pediatric guy at John Hopkins. Very few. He says less than 1% of his patients are treated with anesthesia. Dr. Nelson, I don't know, what do you do, 50-50? or It just depends on the parents. I mean, yeah. we do more cases that are not anesthesia, obviously. Um, so also, um, Alyssa said, still red, but sort of graying in the center, and the edges are left to find. What other than, oh, we mentioned um, laser. With pulse dye laser. And I think you'll get a, I call it the one-two punch, the one-two punch, the Timolol with the laser. Right, well, I mean. Probably face syndrome. Yeah, so. Right? And because if she has any anomalies in the brain. And it's positive for face for GLUT1. That's definitely then it's, then it's definitely face syndrome, yeah. right? So you may just need a face syndrome expert. And I don't know if Dr. Duarte is or not, but Dr. Nelson is. And actually, down in um, 
Charleston, Dr. Huckman has published quite a bit on this, and he's not that far from you. He's in Charleston. Um, okay, and okay. What laser do you use for adults? We Same use thing. the pulse tie laser, and we're also going to be, be using, using the, the second Prima. wavelength yeah. of the Prima. That's yeah. one of the big there's, advantages. There's no difference for pediatrics or adults. Um, okay, so, and that was for Michelle. Um, there, there's maybe a different approach to the anesthesia, mm -hmm. um, but you even use the ocular shields in adults, too. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody gets an ocular shield. Is there a way to know if it'll get bigger? My daughter's hemangioma and her eyebrows started six weeks. It's now the size of a small pea. Picked up at five to six. My derm says it's rare, the growth that we've seen. That's not rare, that's common. We've been on Timolol at six weeks and it's super expensive. We should stay on it even though we've seen a lot of growth. I like to see those pictures, Nicole. So if you could email me um, you, and Dr. Nelson, we can both look at them because I'm a little and If it's skeptical. still growing, you know, you'd have to be concerned maybe your child might need to be put on oral propranolol. Yeah, so if you want to email, they're both published here. Dr. Nelson and my email. Hi, Eric. Hi, um, Mercedes. So we're down to five, four minutes. Uh, uh, how would I find someone in my area for the laser? My derm hasn't mentioned it. Um, you can go on our website at birthmark.org, and we do list, if you go by your region, you have to look and see what the doctors treat. And if you see that it says Port Weinstein, they have to have a laser because it's the only treatment for a Port Weinstein. Um, and that that's the only way I can tell you because we don't, I mean, I'm not sure if we, we don't alphabetize by laser. So you have to go and look by your state or country and look that way. Um, Kim is saying, how long prior to treatment do you need to apply the EMLA? I do it for 90 minutes. I mean, the point is you need it to apply it as a good thick layer. So um, I tell pay I like to have it on for 90 minutes. The woman who I saw whose child today, she told me up at Northern California they do it for 30 minutes, and I haven't found that to be helpful. So yeah, I, don't I like it on for 90 minutes. It's a good thick glare. Yeah. Like I said, like icing on a cake. You can't even see the vascular birthmark. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Dr. Geronimus does the same thing, like 60 to 90 yeah. minutes, and make sure that's really numb. And it's important for the um, children because if you traumatize them once, then they're not going to be cooperative with you. So it's really important that first couple of times that you, if anything, put more EMLA on and let it sit longer. The longer, the better, so that the child doesn't have the anxiety associated with the subsequent treatments. So and all of you where the links, our staff has pointed the posting links all throughout this. You can go back and scroll. You can rewatch it. You can listen from the beginning. Oh, you're welcome, Eric. And we love what you do, too, as well, to raise awareness for living with the poor wine stain. Um, how painful is a PDL for a pea-sized hemangioma? My daughter screams. It's trivial. For a pea-sized hemangioma, it's one or two pulses. So, I would do it without anesthesia and just, just go ahead and do it. Um, this group has given so much insight. Baby girl has several hemangiomas, no ulcerations. Most are shrinking. Thank you for this group. Love your hairstyle. <laughs> Oh, my little puppy thing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I use it 60 minutes prior when I took the argon. Well, we don't, we're not talking about the argon anymore. They're in the garbage. The, the argon laser, you're just burning skin. Yeah. So They're in the garbage can. We're not using an argon laser. We won't refer to anyone who has an argon laser. So um, we're down to uh, one minute. Right. One minute and yeah. 44 seconds. One minute. Uh, again, Dr. Nelson has the... Prima laser, woohoo! In, in two weeks, he'll be rocking and rolling it. And when we're back for our next session, sometime this summer, he'll give us some feedback. Next month, we are on with uh, Dr. Wayner talking about all vascular birthmark types. Um, in May, I will be in Miami with Dr. Duarte with Facebook Live. Uh, do you provide coverage from someone who wants to attend? Yeah, our conferences are free. So if you can't afford the $100 to come, Michelle, it's zero. And I'd say 75% of the people who attend ask for all the fees to be waived. You get a free hotel, free admission to the conference, free laser if you qualify, free psychotherapy session and breakfast and lunch um, and insurance information. The only thing you got to do is get to the conference. But other than that, we can waive everything for you. 
And again, it's birthmark.org backslash conferences. And last question, my son had 22, but never near his eyes, should he? He has some near his eyes. He should be, but yes. just make sure that they use the proper contact lens metallic shield to protect the orbit. It can be done very safely. It just makes sure that it's the right size and it completely covers the orbit so that there's no risk for an eye injury during the procedure. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't like seeing babies having their whole face lasered and their red yeah. bullseye around it. Um, you need to have that orbit area uh, lasered. And anyways, thank you, Dr. Nelson. Thank you. A great session. Exciting news on the Prima. Exciting news on Dr. Geronimus's paper on our website about um, long-term effects with no anesthesia that you can see. And um, a lot of places take TRICARE, Mer Mercedes. You just have to find out which laser doctors and ask. So thank you. Thank and you. thank you all for tuning in. And you can watch, go back and watch this as many times as you want. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Ciao.